Thank him for keeping you. Thank you for sustaining, for preservation. Thank him for your children, your spouse, your job, your future. Thank him. Thank him. Exalt his majesty. Is by his mercies you are not consumed. For his compassion faileth not. Not of him that runneth or willeth, but of God that showeth mercy. Bless his name, bless him. Wherever you are, right here in this tent, or you are in the auditorium, upstairs, downstairs, everywhere, at the overflow, everywhere, thank him. Bless his name. Worship his majesty. Give him glory. He is mighty. He is mighty. He is mighty. We want to thank you this morning, Father. That's what we come to do just to say thank you for life. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you that the predictions of our enemies have not come to pass. Thank you for keeping us. Even when we didn't know how. We didn't know when. We didn't know how. We don't even know why. But all we know is your mercy and your grace. Your grace and your mercy. We give you praises. We give you praises, my father. We want to thank you. 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 We want to say we love you. We want to say we love you. When I think upon your goodness and your faithfulness each day, I'm convinced it's not because I am worthy to receive this kind of love that you gave. I am grateful for your mercies. I am grateful for your grace. And because of how you pour out yourself, I have come to this song out in praise. Himela, Himela, Okaka, Onye Kenu, Himela, Himela, Ezemo. to sing your good who oh, am I to worship you it's your blood that makes the difference in me and made the way I could not I could never sing your song I could never sing your song The sacrifice For the sacrifice of Calvary Is the reason why Yeah. 
Blessed be your name. Thank you, Father. We worship you, we adore you, we thank you. We thank you for everything. We thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We are grateful, we are appreciative for health, for life, for favor, for breath, for opportunity. In Jesus name I read an article I read an article there was a wealthy man who was a multi billionaire in all currencies of the world he died of cancer and he had some children the first was a girl and the girl wrote something not just cancer the cancer was what you know what he had as underlining ailment then the coronavirus and all of that came you know and um, he got infected with the virus so that escalated the ailments you already had. So the guy wrote something and said, anything money could buy, their father could buy. That even they could buy by reason of how their father had established them. He said, but it was so bad that when he was dying, he died alone in a room with nobody. Nobody could go close for the fear of being infected. Nobody could attend because his stage had deteriorated. And she said, now I know there are things money cannot do. Are you following me? So when you see people who are rich, who have money, who have that, and you just want to be like them, you want to, you don't know the things they are nothing. The things they are going through. You have life. You have health. You have breath. And you are less, and you are, you are complaining. You are complaining over what God has not, how many of you know God does not owe you breath? He doesn't owe you. You can't fight him if he doesn't give it to you. He loves you. You can't take God to court. So I need you to have that sense of gratitude. When I hear people complaining, this I just look at them. I say, this is complaining. Why well, there are people today with all they have, when they wake up in the morning, their family say, Oh, thank God, he's still alive. They they look towards they look forward to every day because their days are already numbered. Doctors have given them days. I've seen people who have walked up to me and said, the doctor said they have six days to live. Some say 16 days to live. Some say 21 days to live. Several like that. And we are so unappreciative. We think, we think God, we think, we think God owes us marriage. God owes us children. God. Gratitude is an attitude. And that's what determines altitude. Your height in life. It's on the platform of how grateful you are. I'm even talking about being grateful. Some people are just looking like that. They don't care. I say, thank God you are alive. Eh, yeah, not me for that before. Thank God you have you have thank God you are you, you are not sick. What do you want to make me sick? You you always you, you always justify your entitlement. You feel an entitlement. Amen. If anybody's around me, one of the things you hear me say all the time is thank you, Father. I say that more than anything. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Because life is a privilege, not a right. It's a privilege and a gift to be enjoyed. So even if you came here this morning, there's no money in your pocket, you don't even know you are going to go back, you, you trek back. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't kill you. Trek excitedly and don't walk too fast. Walk like somebody who parked his car in front. Just take steps gradually like that. When I trek those days, I don't trek. Don't make your trek into obvious. Don't make it obvious that you have no car. So take some dangerous steps. Mm. Don't, don't let it overwhelm you. Don't let any condition overwhelm you. God is faithful. Give God a hand as we take our seat. Give God a hand clap. Amen. Since this pandemic, I have been preaching every day. Almost, sorry, almost every day. We just finished um, Holy Ghost Conference, got into this now. We're getting to youth, getting to ministers' conference, getting to men conference. Amazing grace. 
Operation Jabez. And everybody wants to hear something new. That's the, that's, that's the, that's the pressure. Huh? Yes, that's the pressure on preachers. You, can't rep you, can't, you have to say something. Somebody wants to hear something. You know, and it means there's so much demand on us. Amen. I said amen. amen. Alright, if you have your Bible, we're going to do two scriptures now. Genesis 15. We're going to do Genesis 15. 13. Genesis. If you don't know where Genesis is, it's a serious problem. Genesis 15, 13 and Exodus 12, 40. Let's do Genesis 15, 13. Have, have you found it? And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them and they shall afflict them four hundred years all right exodus 12 verse 40 have you seen it after the count of two can we take it together if you found it one two go now the sojourning of israel who dwelt in Egypt was 430 years breaking the power of delay breaking the power anything that can stop you is a power anything that can reorder and reconfigure a sequence of event is a power. In Joshua chapter 6, verse 26, Joshua gave a prophecy. He said, Curse be the man that rebuilds Jericho. He shall lay the foundation with his first son and he will put on the gates with his last born but in first kings i think chapter 16 verse 34 a king called here 70 years later that king built the wall of jericho he, he, he was surprised when he was building it he laid the foundation his first son died when he was trying to put the gates, the last son died. That prophecy was from Joshua. 70 years it manifested. In 2 Kings chapter 4, I believe 16, Elijah said to a woman, by this time next year, according to the time of life, it means one year, you shall have a son. And exactly one year, it happened. Now, I'm trying to let you know God cannot lie before I expand what I'm about to share. In 2 Kings 7, if you read verse 1, Elisha prophesied and said, By this time, tomorrow, by the next day, 24 hours, the prophecy manifested. In Matthew 26, verse 34, Jesus said to Peter, That you would deny me before the cock crows. Six hours, the prophecy manifested. Every prophecy given by God will not fail. But if you study the place where we read the two references, the Bible says God said to Abraham 
Abraham. Your seed shall be in bondage for 400 years. But if you read Exodus, they were there for 430. 30 years added. God said 400. But it became 430. Yet we say God cannot lie. First Samuel 15, 29. The strength of Israel shall not lie. Titus 1, 2. <laughs> you see, Titus 1, 2 actually says he cannot. Hebrews 6, 18. By two immutable things, we are one, it was impossible for God to lie. It's, now, this said is impossible. Numbers 23, 19. God is not a man for him to lie. And you say God can't lie, but how come? How come it 30 years was added? The prophecy of God on your life cannot fail, but it can be delayed. The prophecy of God over your life will not go unfulfilled but there are powers that will fight and stand to delay it and that is the assignment i have quickly this morning i came to x-ray and i came to arrest every power fighting the fulfillment of your prophecy the power that has delayed your prophecy the power that has contended your prophecy the bible say it shall not tarry it shall surely come I'm here to address what is manipulating your prophecy it is looking like a natural event it is not natural it is the power of delay it is looking like an issue it is not an issue it is the power of delay I come sent by God to make a decree on your life every prophecy you carry every prophecy over your family every prophecy over your life I see it come to pass with speed. I see, I see it come to pass with speed. I am a shada bahaka. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oxford dictionary meaning of delay. Something or someone late or slow. Deferred or postponed something or someone late or slow deferred or postponed my definition prophecy the power, uh, delay rather is a stretch between time of prophecy and fulfillment a stretch in time between the prophecy and the fulfillment when time stretches it is called what delay is a prolonged pending an extended pause A prolonged pending an extended pause. God said to them, He said, You are going to be there. 400. How many of you know God cannot lie? I've told you, I say any Christianity that, that makes God solely responsible for its acts and oppression is an irresponsible Christianity. It is. Now, there are many of us, there are things we have heard from God. We know it was God that spoke. But you are, you are sitting down watching time fly. That's what I came to address. The psalmist said in Psalm 6 verse 3, say, Lord, how long? In other words, how long will this, will I be in this level of life? Psalm 13 verse 1, how long? 
Psalm 35, 17, how long? Psalm 74, verse 9, how long? Psalm 80, verse 4, how long? Psalm 89, verse 46, how long? Psalm 90, verse 13, how long? Psalm 94, verse 3, how long? In Jeremiah 29, I think verse 28, Jeremiah said, Lord, this captivity is too long. In Daniel 10, 1, how long? There are powers that have delayed. I came by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hey, everyone, hearing the sound of my voice. Hearing the sound of my voice, wherever you are, the power of delay will be broken from your life. The man of my house, there is power, there is power everywhere. Leave him, leave him, leave him alone, leave him alone. There is power everywhere, wherever you are. If I see delay on you, I break it. I say, if I see delay on you, I break it. Every power that is delaying your prophecy. <laughs> Fighting your prophecy, contending the prophecy of your life. I break that power today. 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 Somebody shall delay. Break. Break. Delay. Delay. Break. Break. Delay. Leave them, leave them, leave them, leave them, leave them. Everywhere there is power this morning. Shall delay, break, delay, break, delay, delay,
down. Sit down. Sometimes, by reason of the prolonged delay, if you are not careful, you start doubting the prophecy. You start doubting the prophecy. It's not about God speaking. It's about, you know, I hear people say, it's not every parable you grow up to meet that is correct. There are some parables that were made by some old frustrated failures. You cannot adapt it. Telling me delay is not denier is not a parable. When delay is not contended, it can become denier. In Genesis 32, the Bible says, when they saw that Moses delayed in coming down, they raised up another God. Were they not denied? I believe in encouragement, but not lies. The downfall of a man is not the end of his life. It depends on where he's falling from. Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's men, all the king's horses could not put Humpty Dumpty together. He fell. They couldn't put him. Don't fall at all. Life is full of ups and down. Yet my Bible says the path of, of the just is like a shiny light that shines up and down. Mama! When I see some things that are called parables, I examine them. If it doesn't make sense, I say this one hmm, is not correct. There are people carrying prophecies. And the truth is this. When prophecy is delayed, affliction is initiated. If God says it will come to pass in two years, when it gets to that two years, and it doesn't happen, it means what happens a day after that two years has become affliction. Because it's no more longer God's program. I wish you understand what I'm saying. In Psalm 38 verse 22, Psalm 38 verse 22, he said, make haste and help me, O God. Psalm 70 verse 1, I think, he repeated the same thing. He said, make haste, O God, deliver me. One, make haste, help me. Somebody said, make haste, deliver me. Make haste, help me. In 1 Samuel 21, verse 8, he said, the last phrase, he said, the king's business requires haste. And I asked myself, why? Lord, you cannot lie. So why did the enemy add 30 years on the prophecy you gave to a patriarch? Abraham was not a man of the law. The law was initiated in the time of Moses. Abraham was in the generation of covenants. That's when people say Old Testament is the law, New Testament is um, grace. I say you don't even understand it. Even the Old Testament is divided into two. Into two. Old Testament is not just one. It's divided into two. Abraham had no Bible. Abraham had no law. Abraham was walking on covenant. Walking with God like this. And when you become a believer, you are of the seed of Abraham. That's what the Bible says in Galatians 3, 13 and 14. Christ has redeemed you from the curse of the law. Be made curse for us. For it is written, curse is everyone that hangs on the tree. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentile. That we might receive the promise of the Father through faith. This was a man of covenant God spoke to. Yet, the enemy delayed. And I began to ask God why. I'll show you three things and then I'll pray. Because something will happen here this morning. Yeah. Number one, God told me, if you remember very well, listen to this before you write that down. If you remember, when Joseph heard the father was still alive, and the father heard 
that Joseph was now prime minister. Joseph ordered his father be brought to Egypt. And Pharaoh gave them a path called Goshen. Am I correct? As they entered into... These were Israelites. As they entered into Egypt, they began to live like Egyptians. God told me number one reason why they were prolonged and their prophecy was contended is that they were living like the Egyptians. If God gives you a prophecy, the first thing that must change is your lifestyle. When a prophecy is on your life and you are living like the world, your prophecy will be contended and delayed. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17, he said, Come out from among them and be ye separate. Touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. I will be a God unto you and a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, say yet the Lord Almighty. Come out. The world, the world is supposed to copy the church. But today the church is competing with the world. There are some of you ladies who came here now. You made your hair. You did your clothes, which is nice. You didn't come with a Bible. You didn't, you didn't come to hear the message. You came just to fashionize like the world the truth of the matter is don't bother don't try to compete with the world you can't catch up with them you live like the world <laughs> in first john 2 15 john said love not the world not the things you don't hear this kind of message he said if any man loveth the world the love of the father what is in the world verse 16 for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes the pride of life he said it is not of the father it is of the world when he says love not the world, he's not saying you should hate your television. He's not saying you should hate your radio. He means the system, the tradition, the way they do things in the world. You want your prophecy to be fulfilled? And you are in church, you are duping people? You buy something for 300 naira, you sell it for 2,000. That's not profit, that is greed. 300 to 2,000. And you say it was God that gave you favor? Some people that come out, some young ladies who come out here, oh God now give me helper, helper now. Let's ask them, who is the helper? What did you give to the helper before the helper did what he did for you? No, don't, don't give that kind of testimony. No, give them. For your own good, no give them. Just shut up. They say we have testimony. They say those that have testimony shall be blessed. In your seat, just say amen. Don't come out. Love, you see, the world has entered the church. People keep money. People lie. Some people lie. Some people, their capacity to lie is spiritual. No, it's not, it's not natural. It's not, it's not a natural thing. It's very spiritual. It's like a gift. They lie like they are prophesying. Their capacity to lie. And you do things, you just think you'll get away with it. You're in church. Somebody wants to marry you. He has taken you to his parents. You still have another person you are dating. No, no. How? Why would God not punish you? You're a young man. 
you engage the girl you promise marriage after the while you drop her you carry another one you drop you carry another one it's good though they will do it to your children i told a young man three days ago i said i engaged one person and i married that person when i engaged mama i engaged that 1998 i didn't have anything 2004 i already had two or three cars of if not four and i was to get married my status has changed so the brethren expected me to bring another girl said, ah, who is the person i said who do you know me with ah, you still want to marry that you see mentality you still want to marry that person i say i don't understand what do you mean that person ha -ha. you know you have to you know there are some young men I'm, I'm going to say this who are married now no children because a lady cost you there are some women who are married to certain rich men they became poor a young man cost you even if you don't like what i'm saying we have we have danced now so we can close you see crowd of people gathering the church crowd thousands of people check 30 percent of them their needs are not met many are just serving god because they just love god their life is in disarray because of people who they have hurt people who are crying to tomorrow a lady remove her womb because of you and you didn't marry her and you didn't marry her she removed womb and tomorrow you say you are not doing again you will do you will do you must do you want to see listen to this listen to this uh, they were living like the egyptians they, they enjoyed their lifestyle so the enemy when when their time came Satan said lord why do you want to set them free they are enjoying the lifestyle <laughs> You end where they end. Whatever you are watching me on television or watching me online, the prayer you should be praying, oh Lord, separate me from the world. You know the said to Jeremiah? He said, while you were in your mother's womb, I knew that, and I ordained thee. Another translation said, I separated you. Paul said, when he pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb, you need to be separated. There are some things that they do. There has to be difference. In the past, I don't know if it's still happened now, but in the past, if you see a northern person, if he tells you hundred things, all are true. From the north. If he tells you hundred things, all are true. But today, in the morning, they will tell you that Boko Haram has been defeated. In the afternoon, they have been technically defeated. In the evening, they have been social, technically defeated. So there's no technical lies. Are you listening to what I'm saying there? There are some people, if they are talking to me, my, my lips are moving. I'm discerning them. Go. I know they lie. I know they, they, they tell lies. I'll be, I say, I hear me, sir. I say, yeah, yeah. People have lied to me for assistance. I gave them. I said, take. I know you are lying, but you are broke. Take. I know you are lying, but just take. If I say the things that are in my mind, some of you may take your Bible and walk out. 
why did God take Moses out of Egypt? Listen, why didn't God just why why didn't God descend on him while he was still in Egypt? Give him an encounter in the dream of the night and say, By this time tomorrow, go to Pharaoh. No, God first took him what? So that God can take Egypt out of him. The character, the attitude. Leave me like them. God needed to take it out of him. And I was studying, I was studying my Bible. I discovered that Egypt's attitude was so much in the Israelites that at every given time they kept making reference to Egypt. Exodus 16, verse 3. Exodus 17 verse 3. They kept making reference. The ways and the traditions of Egypt. Have you known people who say, who say, oh you are lucky. If it's when I was in the world. When anybody says that, he's still in the world. Egypt character was so much in them that at every given time, every opportunity, they made reference. They made reference. How can two believers not, 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 don't talk to each other? How can two believers not relate? How can two believers keep malice? How can two believe? How, how, how? You may not be perfect, but begin to live a life that is sincere. In fact, in 2 Corinthians 7 1, he said, Dearly beloved, having these precious promises, let us lay aside every filthiness of the flesh and spirit perfecting holiness in the fear of God in Luke 6 40 he said the disciple is not greater than his master for everyone that is perfect shall be as his master Matthew 5 48 be ye perfect as your heavenly father in Genesis 17 the first verse verse 1 God said to Moses God said to Abraham rather he says, walk before me and be thou perfect. If God must manifest the words he has spoken over your life, then you must not live like the world. Listen to me. There is a standard of life God expects of you if your advancement must be guaranteed there is a standard of life that God expects of you if your I'm not just talking of lifestyle I'm talking of standard if your advancement must be guaranteed do you know some people by reason of the greatness ahead of them what God expects of them is so high someone else his own sin might be killing somebody but for that man who God expects so much from and has promised a great future, his own sin might be coming late to church. Standard. 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 Am I communicating? Three Sundays ago, I was at home. I finished praying on a Sunday morning. And I was at home. I was writing something. And the Lord told me, He said, You are at home. You know, the Holy Spirit is very funny. He will just drop a word. He said, You are at home. I was confused. Where, where is am I now? He didn't say anything again. He said, You are at home. I began to ponder on that. There are some things the Lord will tell you, He won't talk further. But it will give you wisdom to discern why. I said, Lord, I don't understand. He didn't say anything again. He just said, you are at home. I said, oh, oh, church has started. I'm at home. Oh, I'm not supposed. And he asked me. He said, why would you miss the praise session? I told my wife. I said, I know they miss praise again, no. Now, that's what he asked me. He said, why would you? You only be unwise to be asking questions. It means he's not happy about it. 
Am I communicating here? So I knew he wasn't happy. And I said, Lord, I'm sorry. Last Sunday, Piam, I was here. But you see, the unusual happened. No, it's an encounter. <laughs> Today I was at home, I was shouting, telling the children, I'm late, I'm late, I'm late. I'm late, I'm late, I'm late. But I didn't sleep. My eyes are heavy as I'm talking to you. I've not slept. But that's not an excuse. I could have said, let me, at least. You heard me shouting at home. I said, I'm late. Every people are delaying me. I need to go. When he didn't say, make sure you attend the prayer session, he said, why would you miss? He kept quiet. The only ghost I know is not a parrot. Oh. He would just drop a word. And I told myself, no, not just on Sunday, throughout the September to remember. I was running with all the demands and pressures. Anything can wait after service. Why? God said, before somebody else, they can come late and I have no problem with them. He said, before the standard I place you, there's something I expect. That's why you must be careful of living like people. They can do something and get away with it. But you can't... Oh, Lord. Don't look at people when they do what they do. Walk with God on your own. <laughs> Israel knew the acts of God. Moses knew his ways. What is carnality? Anything that reduces your love for God is carnality. Your handset can become your carnality. 24 hours, you're on the phone. It's carnality. Handset that has affected your prayer life is carnality. You are always browsing. If you are not browsing, you are Facebooking. You are not Facebooking, you are WhatsApping. You are not WhatsApping, you are Instagramming. You are tweeting. If you are not doing any of this, you are just surfing the net. Looking for what's not looking for you. It has taken your prayer life. You can hold your phone for five hours non-stop. You run out of data. You put, you subscribe. Less than one hour data leaves again. You subscribe. One hour data say, Can rest now. It leaves again. You subscribe. But prayer. We gather here. Raise one prayer point. After five minutes, you cross your leg. Papa, you preach now. If we pray at the prayer point today, which one will we pray tomorrow? <laughs> I pray for you. In the name that is above every name. The power to live differently from the world. The power to walk with God. The power to live holy. The power, the enablement for you to live in righteousness, in purity. May it fall upon you today. Receive that empowerment. Receive that endowment. Somebody shout fire. Number two. Can I go on? Number two. <laughs> Why was their prophecy delayed? Their prophecy was delayed for 30 years because there was no man available for God to send. No man. No man. God, all through the generation, was looking for a man. It was Moses who was supposed to be the next king of Pharaoh, next king of Egypt, next king after Pharaoh. He left all the pleasure 
Hebrews 11, 25, he said, Choose it rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than the pleasures of sin for a season. He left all the pleasure, he left all the wealth and went to the wilderness to encounter God. <laughs> he was the only one who was ready to surrender. Listen, you can't say you are making yourself available until you are ready to deny pleasure. Sacrifice is your readiness to deny pleasure, yourself pleasure. That's what sacrifice is. Your readiness to deny yourself pleasure in all its forms. Moses! And that was why the enemy, Oshabanda Karika Sokatela Bakata. Do you know? <laughs> God said to Ezekiel, Lie on one side, on your right side, for 390 days. Lie on your left side for 40 days. At 390 years in bondage, God was already strategizing the freedom of Israel when he got to 390. But when Moses was 40, he left Egypt. And the enemies delayed him in the wilderness for another 40 years. That was the 40 years that was added to the 390 that made it 430. So long Moses was being fought, being resisted, Israel was crying. Let me say this to you. If the enemy wants to mess you up, he will attack your helper. If the enemy wants to mess you up, he will attack your helper. Many of us today, there are people that want to favor us, but their finances are grounded because of us. Because the devil knows that if this person is blessed, something comes his way, you will celebrate. So he attacks him or attacks her. Let me show you something. Oh, Shaka Patara Dayadash. Look up. In Genesis 49, in verse 19, Jacob was talking to all his sons. He said, God. Somebody say, God. Say, God. Say, God. He said, A troop shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at the last. What's the name of the man? What was the son's name? What was the son's name? Somebody say, God. Say, God. He said, A troop shall overcome him. He will go through pain. He will go through hardship. He said, but at the end, in Mark 5, verse 2, Jesus came to a place. Start from verse 1. He came over to the sea into the country of the what? Of the, of the gatherings. The descendants of God. This man that was by the tomb was one of the offspring of God that Jacob spoke about that a troop shall overcome them. But at the end, when the unclean spirits were in that young man, they didn't know that there was a prophecy in his lineage. That you can carry him to the tomb. You can carry him anywhere but at the end. You can make him miserable but at the end. But this is it. Why Jesus was coming to deliver him a storm. I'm saying if the devil wants to mess you up, he will attack your helper. A storm. A storm came, a wind came. But that child, do you know the Bible says, when that young man was delivered, he went into a city called Decapolis. Decapolis means ten cities. In other words, as he was delivered, he became an evangelist in charge of ten cities. From a demonic, frustrated young man that was by the tomb, he became an 
an evangelist in 10 cities I am I'm speaking to somebody when the devil came on that boy he didn't know there was a prophecy that you may overcome him at the beginning but you overcome at the last listen to me I don't care or know what you are going through at the moment but you will overcome at the last I say you will overcome at the last I say you will overcome at the last I say you will overcome at the last somebody shot fire there was no man there was no man listen to me you are experiencing delay now because the man ordained has not shown up even if he's around he has not performed when you give to God God does not give you back money God gives you men is the men that bless you Luke 6 38 give and it shall be good measure press down shall men when you give God substance God gives you men in John chapter 5 verse 7 he said Jesus asked him will that be made whole he said sir I have no man how long have you been here bring up verse 6 John 5 verse 6 Jesus said unto, Jesus saw him lie and knew Jesus knew he had been there in that case a long time he said to him will thou be made whole I know you've been here for a while but do you want to be well do you want to be okay verse 7 the young man responded I sir I have no man in other words I have been here for a while I have been in captivity in solitude as it were because I lack the right man there are people but there is no man there are individuals when you lack relevant men time flies when you lack you see some people getting old cold crude life is just going time is flying because you lack the relevant people but today listen this is a service of men a service for men the person ordained by heaven to put a tambourine in your hand to put dancing shoes on your feet to put a crown on your head he will show up after this service hey! as you hear the sound of my voice he will show up 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 you don't serve a dead God you serve a mighty God he is the same yesterday he is the same today he is the same forever when God says yes no man can say no when God lifts you up no man can bring you down God is on your side power is on your side glory is on your side God is on your side lift the one shot fire yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. There are customized helpers who have your name written on their cargo. Listen to me. Can I say this to you? Will you listen to this? In life, be yourself. Anyone sent to you will stay with you will help you don't try to become somebody else to please someone be yourself sometimes we try to adjust sit to please family members who actually don't care about us we want to please them if I think of pleasing you, what's your contribution to my life?
You see a biological father or biological mother will call the child and say, come here. You have not contributed anything. You still expect the honor of a parent. Sitting them down, trying to screw them and tell them what to do when you have no, you have no contribution. It doesn't have to be money. There is concern. Parents carrying themselves as if they are the, they are the best thing that happened after sliced bread. Sit down. It's crazy. What is a father? A father is a source. It's a covering. Am I communicating? So, so. <laughs> when the right man, the right helper comes your way. The helper comes with peace. Peace. When somebody puts your life under pressure, that's some of you are like that. You are bullied. Somebody will insult you, insult you, insult you, insult you, insult you. He said, take 10,000. We insult you, insult you, insult you, insult you, insult you. Carry this one cup of rice. We'll abuse you, abuse you, abuse you, abuse you, abuse you, abuse you, abuse you. Take, take that bread. Leave the butter. Leave the butter. <laughs> Carry the bread. Ridicule you, ridicule you, ridicule you, ridicule you, ridicule you. See, I'm there. Carry, leave my knife, oh. Not carry my knife. Carry the yam, go. I know. <laughs> How many of you understand what I'm talking about? How many of you understand what I'm talking about? I've always told you, be careful how you treat people. I mean, we have a home in Benin, and the security in there, men, they are quite elderly. We have a home now, which, I mean, security there are small, small boys. I can knock their head and all of that. Anything happens. Come on, go and turn the generator on. Come on, go and do this. But in Benin, if the light goes off, I'm looking at my wife, she's looking at me. She only tell them to one the gen. I said, one is 68. The other is 72. They like you more than they like me. <laughs> Help me tell them. I pay them, but my conscience does not allow me to give instruction. Oh, oh, they want to do it. They are in a hurry to do it. Oh, you have been so good to us. Sir, anything? I say, well done, sir. God bless you. God, I disappear. When you mock people, you will be When you mock people, someday your house self is staying with you now. And you are messing up. You think you'll be alive forever? Your child will stay with somebody one day now. <laughs> hmm. You know. <laughs> I don't care. My, my, my. God is on my side. There's nothing you can do. And you treat people anyhow. And God is looking at you. One day I was walking with my pastors, two of them. And I saw so many people, I was greeting them. One of them actually forgot. If he's watching this, now he'll be laughing. One of the senior pastors. One. We got far. I didn't say anything. I made sure we went far. I stopped. I got a chair. I sat down. I said, you will go back. You show that old mama, that old woman, go and greet her. She said, she has gone far. I said, look for her. Bend. Greet her. Then come. I said, because there is, there is something about honor and humanity 
that prayer can't give you. There's a way you treat people. There's a blessing it carries that fasting can't give you. Ah. Mm. I want to say this before I, I just hear this in my spirit. Any bad attitude from you or any statement you have made to offend God Anywhere you have challenged God or insulted him because of your condition that has made him turn his back on you may mercy speak for you yeah. number three and then I'll pray God said in fact in Exodus chapter 2 verse 23 first before chapter 3 verse 7 in verse 23 of Exodus 2 the Bible says God said their cry has come to me in chapter 3 of Exodus verse 7 Exodus 3 7 God said to Moses that he has seen the affliction which they are in Egypt and he has heard their cry they were there and delayed number 3 because they refused to cry out they refuse to cry out. They refuse to cry out. This is not where your life should be. Cry out. This is not the level you are to be at this stage of life. Cry out. God said you will get married, but there is a power fighting it. Cry out. God said you will go to nations, business, international business, but there's a power fighting you. Cry out. Oxford Dictionary calls cry a loud scream. A loud what? If you are too gentle, you can't settle. If you are too gentle, you end in a kettle. Cry out! Oxford Dictionary describes cry as a shout. A shout. A shout. A shout. A shout. Listen to me. When Pharaoh's daughter went to take a shower, in the bulrushes of Egypt in Exodus 2 when she saw what she saw was a grass she wanted to know what it was as she opened it the baby wept Exodus 2 verse 6 it was the cry of that babe that attracted her when she had opened it she saw the child and the bio, the baby wept you are too gentle oh of you, the way you pray, it shows that you are not serious. The way you pray, you have not seen the picture of where you are going. They refused to cry. So God was looking at them. They were suffering. God was looking at them. When they cry, God said, now you are ready. When they cry out, Lord, intervene. Lord, bring us out. Lord, bring us out. You don't understand. You see, not be everybody when they work out, they talk to himself, they mad. Oh. I used to think that when people are walking and they are talking back to themselves, they are soliloquizing. I thought it's a mental problem. No, there's a condition somebody gets to. If I can't reach out and I get that land or the condition shout on my head. Go shout on my head, shout on my head. I know what I will do. I will enter the house. When the alarm, it, it don't start to. I will enter the house. Maybe by nine. I will go to my friend's place. He's talking alone. He's overwhelmed by the condition. You had better be serious. So that substance 
Some years ago, one of the times I traveled to America, many years ago, I bought something for my wife. It was a rose flower. It was the biggest mistake I made. When I just came back to her, I said, I got you something. I opened it, I gave her. She said, yeah, what's this? I said, rose flower. He said, eh. She just dropped it somewhere. Hey, what did you bring? <laughs> because I saw people doing it. Not that, not that I believe in it. Oh. No, I don't believe in it. But I saw people doing it. And the people, the women who collected, wow. But my wife, she, she's just herself. $140. Wasted. She would have even valued vegetable. <laughs> Ugu punky leaf. <laughs> I think my marriage was like three or four years old then. She just kept it on the. I'm, I'm sure in her mind, this man maybe is trying to crack a joke. Hey, substance. There are things you see in life. You don't pretend. This is not what you bargain for. This is not what you bargain for in life. There are so many of us. We are very comfortable with bad news. Somebody goes to the hospital and they give you, say, you have this, what you have. And you're smiling. Doctor, really? Doctor? Really? You mean actually this? Oh, my God. Oh, wow what am i gonna do but there's somebody else who gets a report from the doctor's office ah! not me doctor not me doctor it's not me it's not in my spiritual dna jesus didn't have it and i don't think the holy ghost has it so i can't have it not me not me not me not god wants a cry the bible says in jeremiah 33 and verse 3 call unto me he said and i will answer you and show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not in first timothy chapter 2 and verse 8 paul said he said i will therefore that men pray everywhere if the bad news came on the bus stop bind it there if it came in the kitchen bind it there you had it in the restroom Find it there. Men pray everywhere. It is time to cry out. This is not your destiny. This is not where God has ordained for your life. My life cannot end like others in my family. My life cannot end the way the enemy predicted. The delay must end. I will pray until something happens. The delay must break. Stand on your feet, everybody. Shambayala Taka. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. We're going to take three sharp prayers. Three what? Sharp. You know, if there is anything. That only God can bring back. I mean, if a car goes, a car can come. If a building goes, a building can come. If position goes, position can come. But the only thing God can bring back is wasted years. That's why I never said I'll restore lost cars, lost chariots. He said, I will restore all the years that they can't come on. All the years. We're going to take three prayers. Lift your right hand. Say, Father. Father. Say, My Father, My Father. My Father, My Father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. As I begin to pray. As I begin to pray. Every appetite for carnality. Die from my life. Open your mouth and talk to the
Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. As I pray. As I pray. Every man sent to my life. Every man sent to my life. Every woman assigned to my life. Every woman assigned to my life. To change my story. To change my story. As I pray. As I pray. Manifest. 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 Open your mouth and pray. Said dry bones, hear the word. You will speak to delay. You will speak to what? Say, my father, my father. My father. As I begin to pray. In the name of Jesus. You power of delay. You power of delay. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Listen, as we take this prayer, power will fall. Uh -huh. There are people the Lord will be tearing forcefully, evil garments. Say so every power of delay, as I begin to pray, break, 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 open your mouth and fire.
at your two hands i have 600 people here uh -huh. power is coming you carry prophecies but it's being contended holy spirit hallelujah Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. 